Regarding racism, racism is rampant in Thunder Bay. It's very, very healthy. Um, when I was younger, it wasn't, it was always there, of course, but uh, because maybe the Fort William First Nation kind of stuck to themselves over there and they came out once in a while to West Fort and so forth, it wasn't so bad. But now we have a lot of Native people in Thunder Bay and, and uh, you know, when you go to the store, they know you're Indian and they, you certainly get the diff different treatment. But you know what, I'm used to it. I really don't give a damn. <laughs> to be honest, because you have to stand up for yourself, because if you don't stand up for yourself, um, we're going to go down. Paul Pugh, I'm city councillor. Um, I'd like to relay an experience that as a councillor I had in the last, uh, last year. Uh, we were trying to put together with the Indian Friendship Centre, a youth centre uh, in, in a part of the ward that I represent, and there, there were two definite outcomes to that. Uh, one is there was clearly, to my mind at least, uh, a racist opposition to it, very vocal, very very clear. Um, the other side is that I was happy to see that as, as the debate went on, the majority of people uh, that came to the meetings were clearly in favor of going ahead with it, despite the vocal minority. So there's the two sides to it. Um, and. I, I agree with the previous speakers who said that we have a real problem in Thunder Bay with racism, but I'm, I'm optimistic or I'm hopeful that the majority don't, sh don't believe that, don't feel that way, and that we will be able to get through this and uh, make sure that we have a society that's welcoming to everybody. Last year, 2014 election year, uh, provincials and municipal, and I know that there is a lot of hidden racism. I knew there was a lot of hidden racism and ignorance out there in the community. But I was very surprised just how much there was that came out during the election year and how publicly and how easily it came out. And there is, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of people in Thunder Bay that want to do something to change it, far more in the majority. And there's a lot of intelligent, conversation going on about this. There's a lot of smart people involved in this. But the arguments, um, I think, have gotten to the point of being too academic, and they're talking to the converted, or the easily converted. Mm -hmm. And they're not reaching the people that we want to get to um, that are just not interested in hearing what, what is being told to them. I always talk about the everyday teachable moments. Because I'm not visibly First Nations, I hear the conversations that go on between people and it can be really, really sad when they think that no one's really listening, that no one is really hearing what they're saying because everyone's the same. And it's so emotional because it can be such vile things, they're talking about your family and your friends. And it's, those are the, the hidden moments that you, you hear, that you experience. And it's, and you wonder how can we still be like this after all these years and all the work people are putting in because it's not like Thunder Bay is a terrible place. I love Thunder Bay and people are working really hard for First Nations people and for people in general within the community to have a safer and healthier community. But we still need to progress, we still need to move forward because there's still so much work to do. Thunder Bay is not unique. If you go to any community where there's power structures, there's going to be racism. There's going to be, um, there's going to, and, and that goes, there, and not only racism, there's going to be um, inequality with, um, with money, with, with social, do with everything. Do you face examples of that in your daily life here? With, what do you mean? Ra discrimination? Yes, for example? but I think I, for me, I'm not like I'm not visually native, and so when what I hear are comments uh, from the other side, people will make comments to me about um, First Nations and that we're all drunks, and why don't why don't you know they don't have to we don't have to pay they don't have to pay taxes, and so you hear all like those those stereotypes, um, but I think um, what we need to understand is we need to come to this just trying to understand there's no one answer but we cannot blame the other side we cannot we have to stop that but we have to come together understanding and i was talking to someone the other day and he he said to me what does we mean to you and it was such a great question because in our lang like in, in the english language it's like what does it mean and i know it means different 
things in the Ojibwe language. So it's just, what does, what does we mean to you?